when you start combining all the drums, getting a little taste of the Black 1176, it goes, it goes from just a couple of mics sitting to a room to almost all the way to John Bonham. And the feeling of the room being alive and the drums being alive and really poking out in the mix, which to me is very important. The vocals, the drums, two very major important parts of your mix. The things that really set apart the presence of the mix and you know, the use of these plugins in the mix is really what's helping us. So let's see what happens when we take a mono room, which is just one mic set out in the middle of the room for the drums, and see what happens when you put a little abuse on it. Now we can take the input and drive that even harder. And this is where the all button's in. Let's see how she takes a bit more brutality. All of a sudden, it got explosive. So start that section one more time without all buttons in. You hear the distance and the size and how long the snare drum gets, and you're like, wow, I really like that. How can I get that all the time? Well, the great thing is you can get that by having the plug in and by using the all buttons in, which give it a, gives it kind of a different character different, more aggressive thing, kind of something you did on the old limiters, but by using the plug-in, you'll get that the same every time you go for it, where if I go and put all four buttons in, I don't know what I'm gonna get. I might get an explosion sometimes with the old gear. So let's just hear that mono room without anything on it and see what really it sounds like. So like with the other room, it's pretty just, you know, uncompressed, pretty straight ahead, and maybe a little bit unexciting, but when you put all buttons in again, let's hear that. That gives you a taste of kind of what we do with the drums with the black 1176s. Each one of these units sounds different. That's the, that's the thing about the 1176s, the LA3s, and the LA2s. They all sound different. Um, so the real tricky part was going through them all and finding the character that worked to make the one plug-in for each one. Um, and I think it was great to have, since I have a pretty good variety of them all, that when we scoped them all out, tested them all out, and tried them all, that we said, well, this unit's, you know, this unit's attack is really good, but this unit's release is really good. This unit's distortion might be too much, and this unit doesn't really distort enough. Because part of the character, really, is kind of the distortion, is the, is the attitude it adds. So um, these are devices that it was just the perfect thing to make a plug-in from, because everybody who has them feels the same way about, they're all different. Some are great, some are bad. We'd love to have one that we could start with on the way in and have it always sound great. Time is kind of your enemy with the old gear. And by modeling them while they're still like in their heyday, they're still really having a sound, is you're modeling something that A, they're not gonna make anymore, and B, it's something that's not gonna improve and it's gonna be harder to get it kind of when it still has a vibe. I mean, these old compressors that have been around 40 years, um, if you rebuild them and re-wire like wire them to fix them up so they'll work, they're not gonna have that thing that they had. So with all this old gear, by modeling it now, we almost make a timestamp of it so we can have that tool tucked away. We can still have the old gear, we can still limp it along probably for 100 more years, you know, whatever it takes, but it's not gonna be still original. A lot of these things are kind of still original, and that the capacitors have dried out. That's part of the sound. So really, after a while, you're, it's like a fair child. I mean, if you don't model it soon, you're never going to be able to model it because it's heydays over. So let's go to a plugin we haven't touched on yet, which is the LA3s. My first favorite place I found for LA3s was acoustic guitars because they're pointy and spiky and they never seem to fit in the mix and some limiters just, just don't do it. And... Um, Acoustic guitar is used a lot, so, and in rock songs, you kind of want to have them driving and loud without, you know, being real small and glassy, so <clears throat> let, let us look at the track and find what the acoustics are, and let's solo those up and hear what those sound like with our LA-3A plugins on them.
I listen to the acoustics and I'm like, wow, those really groove and feel good to me and they have the sustain. Let's hear it without the plug-in and let me be surprised how they really are. You could play the mix now with those acoustics in. Let's just play a piece and see how clear they are in the mix. All the trials that we're facing If we don't give up hope then we've made it Every wall that we climb we get stronger inside Can't you hear what I'm trying to say? You know what? So what I notice is that before, I would only, if I didn't have the LA-3s on it, I would only kind of just hear the peak of the acoustic just popping out. Because as you notice with the rock song, that acoustic guitar may only have a really small parking spot. How about like a motorcycle spot? He can only squeeze his car into the tiniest parking spot so you can actually hear him. So that's the part of the thing that makes it exciting is that you can actually find a space for him so you hear him and he doesn't eat up valuable parking for drums, vocals, and other guitars. So I hear his whole texture now when we use the LA-3 on him. So what's another thing we use the LA-3 on? Let's try some other rhythm guitars. What that did is that took the dynamic, even though distorted guitars have basically zero dynamic, what it does is it A, adds the tone from the LA-3, which adds its own frequency curve, and actually just pushes it more in your face. Even though it might be just sitting at zero level-wise, it pushes it into your face more by driving more compression in it. Now, if we listen to the track without the compression, let's just play that little beat piece again. What I notice is different aside from maybe the level, you know, when you pop a plug in and pop it out, you're gonna have a little bit of a level change. But what I notice is the tone. By using the LA-3, the tone gets creamier and, cause sometimes a high guitar that's distorted will feel like, you know, like a bee buzzing around your head. And you're like, oh my God, I can't handle that. It's just too bitey. But it, it makes it sound creamy for me, which means it's, it's clear, but it's, it can take up space without biting. So let's just listen to that guitar riff back in the track with the LA-3 on it. So what I find right there is that what it did by, what the compressor does by adding some creaminess to it, is it found its little niche, it found its spot in the song. And the real key to all these plugins is that when you add them up and pile them up, you notice that everything starts to have its own space. And a very important part about mixing is to be able to create space for other instruments. And the great thing about the classic compressors is that each one of them has a texture and a tone that will give it space in the mix. So if you use it on every single instrument, you could actually create more space for more instruments, especially in today's music. People are trying to carve in more guitars, more riffs, more vocals, and their biggest problem is, wow, where am I gonna find space for all this? Well, this is actually like the Magic Space Maker because it controls the dynamics and gives it a place to go. Everyone with a Pro Tools rig that wants to try out compression, this is the best compressors to start with because they are literally copying the first greatest compressors ever made. The compression that started the whole compression thing were the, basically these three, 2A, 3A, 1176, designed by Bill Putnam. Um, aside from Abbey Road, custom building compressors for the Beatles and the Fairchild, and a few esoteric ones, I mean, the tool that's been in every studio every recording studio since they began has been these three. So it's really 
I mean, if you really look at it, and it's not, it's not me saying, hey, let's use the CLA stuff. How about, these are the tools that you should have to try out. This has been, this is what I think are the best emulations of these classic tools. No matter what we both